this is going to be a good one. Full machine learning project, coding a fitness tracker with Python. For those of you that are new here, my name is Dave. I'm a freelance data scientist. And on this channel, I help you to learn data science with Python. And I've had various requests to cover a full machine learning data science project. So uh, that's what we're going to do in this video series. This will be the first part, part one, the introduction of this whole series. So who is this for? This is for anyone that's learning data science or machine learning. And that is an absolute beginner or uh, intermediate at this. I will make sure that I explain everything in great detail so beginners can follow along. But there also will be some uh, more advanced techniques involved within this project, especially with regards to processing sensor data that can benefit intermediate to even advanced machine learning practitioners or data scientists. So level beginner to intermediate, people learning data science and machine learning, or people that want to learn how to process and analyze sensor data. So if that sounds like you, then follow along you will learn a lot from this project. Let's cover the goal of this project. So we're going to create Python scripts to process, visualize and model accelerometer and gyroscope data to create machine learning model that can classify barbell exercises and count repetitions. We're basically going to create a fitness tracker with Python that can classify the following exercises that are visualized over here. So these are various barbell exercises. Uh, and if you're into fitness, uh, these probably will not be new to you, but we here we have the bench press, we have the deadlift, the overhead press for the shoulders, the barbell row for the back, and of course the squat for the legs. Okay, and now you're probably wondering like, okay, how are we actually going to track and classify these exercises like what data are we going to use and we're going to use a data set that was collected using this device over here and this is a meta motion sensor from ambient lab which is a pure uh, research device so it has no fancy screen or fancy features it just has a bunch of sensors uh, that you can connect via bluetooth to your mobile phone and then start tracking uh, and logging the values and then you can export to a csv file which will result in a nice data set so we're going to use a data set that I collected about three years ago using this device and doing these exercises over here. And I have this data set because this project was part of my master artificial intelligence degree. So by following this video series, you will have access to content, uh, insights, knowledge from an actual university master level course that I followed at the Freie Universiteit of Amsterdam, which was given by a great professor, Mark Hogedorn, which is also a researcher and also published a book about this uh, topic. So the course was called Machine Learning for the Quantified Self. And the book that he released um, for this course was also called Machine Learning for the Quantified Self on the Art of Learning from Sensory Data. So this book is not required to follow this project, but it's a great resource if you really want to get in depth and learn more about the theory behind what we're going to do in this project. So this project will be more hands-on applied machine learning instead of very theoretical. And looking back at my years in university, so first my bachelor in artificial intelligence and then my master in artificial intelligence, I think this is one of the best courses I followed. So that's why I decided to cover this project within this video series. Also, I'm quite passionate about the project itself because I like fitness and this was a topic that we would get to choose ourselves. So um, the machine learning for the quantified self course was a kind of a broad course. And then for the final assignment, uh, students could pick their own topic area of interest, so to say, to apply the theory to. And I decided to apply it to fitness, uh, but more on that later. So coming back to some of the introduction, the background of this project. And I will also make this document available in the description so you can check out those resources. So here we have the book that I just showed you. There's also an official website for the book that has some additional source material. So they have 
Uh, I think they have a link to the data set that they use for the examples in the book and also the source code that they use, which is available on GitHub. So this is for the examples within the book. Uh, we're going to do another project and we're going to use some parts of this repository, uh, but not all of it. Then what else? We also have the meta motion sensor. So there is some documentation on the, the sensor over here. So you can see all the sensors that are in there and um, the hardware and some other specifications. So that is the sensor that I showed you that was used to measure all the data. Yeah, so then the data itself, which we will really dive into in the next episode. But to give a brief overview, this was collected during gym workouts. And as I said, the data was collected by me and I've used five participants in total. So five different people, uh, me included and four others. And we all performed all the various barbell exercises with the meta motion sensor attached to our wrist and by doing so each of these exercises created a distinct pattern of sensor data which we will look into in the next episode okay and the code for this project will not be made available via github and i will do that on purpose because these videos take a lot of time and effort to make. And I make this for people that want to learn data science and machine learning, not for people that just want to copy code. So within this project, there will be a lot of custom functions that I developed over the years that can really speed up the way you work with sensor data. And if you follow along, if you follow all the videos, you can code these functions yourself and then you will have access to them and you will also understand how they work. And if I make this code available to GitHub, I know that there will be a lot of people that just clone the repository from GitHub and don't follow or watch the videos and don't like the videos and that won't help the channel. So I make these videos and I will provide as much value as I can to help grow this channel so I can help more people learn data science and machine learning. And in order to do that, I have to make sure that people watch my videos. It's as easy as that. That's why I don't make the code available on GitHub. Now, I would also encourage you to like this video because this way you tell YouTube to bring up more content like this within your YouTube feed. So you will see more videos to learn data science and machine learning, which will help you. Okay, so before we dive into all the topics that we're going to cover, I wanna first quickly explain the definition of a quantified self as defined by Mark Hogendorn and Burkhard Funk in their book, Machine Learning for the Quantified Self. So they state or define the quantified self as any individual engaged in the self-tracking of any kind of biological, physical, behavioral, or environmental information. And this self-tracking is driven by a certain goal of the individual with a, with a desire to act upon the collected data. So this is the definition and the quantified self uh, is something that at least in the recent years I have seen to gain popularity. So uh, nowadays there are a lot of devices like uh, the whoop bands for example, which I'm wearing by the way. Uh, and also the, the Apple Watch, which I'm also wearing, by the way, that track a lot of metrics related to the self. So these are like things like heart rate, sleep, exercise. And people use this data to try and improve their lives. So if we come back to the definition, uh, this self-tracking is driven by a certain goal of the individual with the desire to act upon the collected information. So, for example, I'm wearing a whoop strap to mainly uh, measure my sleep uh, because I find it really important. I feel so much better when I have consistent good nights of sleep and it's pretty hard to accurately track sleep without a device like this. I've also used the Aura Ring in the past. So uh, nowadays you have the version three, I use the version four. Um, I switched to the Whoop Band, although I like some features of the Aura Ring better than, than the Whoop Strap. Uh, that uh, could be a topic for another video. Coming back to the definition over here, 
I would consider myself a quantified self because I am an individual engaged in self-tracking with the goal, etc. And I'm also noticing a trend where more and more people are getting interested in collecting measurements like this. So as I said, wearing Apple watches, whoop bands, aura rings, um, I see this within the online space. I see more and more people uh, purchasing devices like this. Also in my in my close friend group, um, I have a lot of people that are actually wearing a, a whoop band. So this is a trend. And I think this notion of being a quantified self uh, will gain more and more attention and we will become more popular, especially as the devices get better and better. Now, and the topics that we will cover during this project can not only be applied to sensor data, Data with regards to the quantified self, but you can basically apply it to any sensor data. So this could be a vibration sensor that is attached to a physical asset to monitor its condition, which then in turn is used for predictive maintenance, stuff like that. Basically, whenever there is time series data, IoT data, typically time series, you can apply the knowledge, the, the concepts that we will cover during this project. So this will be fun and you will learn a lot. So let's get an overview of what we will cover. So there are seven weeks in total. You are now watching to the content of the first week. So we talked about the introduction, the goal of this project. We briefly talked about the quantified self. What is a quantified self? We talked about the meta motion sensor that was used to collect the data and we also briefly talked about the data set itself but as i said we will be really diving into that in the next week so week two will be all about converting the raw data so processing the data will be we will be reading the csv files we will split them and clean them so we'll do some fundamental data processing steps using the pandas library uh, which is essential to understand if you want to be a data scientist or machine learning practitioner. Then in week three, we're going to visualize the data. Uh, we will be creating functions to plot time series data to really get a good understanding of the data. So another essential part of any data science or machine learning project. Then in week four, we're going to look at outlier detection using various methods. So we're going to clean up this data because uh, sensor data can be really noisy. So for example, imagine I'm doing a squat. So I'm doing this, this exercise. And then all of a sudden um, I rest for one second in between and I want to adjust the bar, for example. So I, I move my hand and the sensor records this motion, of course, but this is not part of the actual exercise. So how are we going to handle that? So that uh, we're going to check out in week four. Then in week five, we're going to look at feature engineering. We're going to look at how we can extract features from time series data. And we're going to look at frequency. We're going to look at uh, numerical features. We're going to look at time features. We're going to apply some filtering. So we're going to apply a low pass filtering. We're going to look at principal component analysis and we're also going to apply clustering. So this will also be a very big week. And then in week six, we're going to look at predictive modeling and we're going to build a classifier or I should say various classifiers and we're going to compare them and check out which of the following models over here can uh, best classify the barbell exercises that are captured within the data set. And then finally, in week seven, to make the fitness tracker complete, we're going to build a custom algorithm to also count repetitions. So then eventually we will have a model that given a series of sensor data can predict first what kind of exercise are you doing? And second, how many repetitions are you doing? So imagine like in a perfect world where we have a perfect model, you could just wear a watch or use an Apple watch, for example, with this model implemented in an application. And this application is actively monitoring the accelerometer and gyroscope data. And then it could automatically track your exercises because it is trained 
on all these various exercises. And we would, of course, have to expand the scope uh, by including more exercises. But then you could just walk into the gym, put the bar in your neck, start doing squats, and the application will recognize that you're doing squats. And it can also count the repetitions. And then once you're done with squats, you can open up the application and it will probably tell you something like, hey, I noticed that you did three sets of 10 repetitions on the squat. Is that correct? And then you can answer, yes, that is correct. And then you only have to fill in the weight. So for example, I did 100 kg for the squat. And then you have successfully tracked an exercise. That will be cool, right? You can just walk into the gym, start doing your exercises, and then afterwards you will just get an overview in the application uh, and fill in the missing information. And I really like this approach because it's the other way around. So instead of opening up an app when you start a workout and specifying, okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this, this is the other way around and you just go in, you just do your workout, you focus on your workout, and then afterwards you can fill in the blanks. And Apple and other companies are already implementing stuff like this within their uh, smart devices. So if you have an Apple Watch, for example, you probably recognize the concept that I'm explaining here. So if you, for example, start running using an app, wearing an Apple Watch, or you go on an elliptical trainer, after about two to three minutes, you will get a notification and the watch will ask you like, Hey, I've noticed that you are running. Is that correct? Do you want to track this exercise? And then uh, when you press OK, it will start to track this exercise. But this functionality is only available for uh, more cardio-like exercises. So as I said, like rowing, running, the elliptical. But it's not available for strength training. And I think this is an area um, of improvement. And I know there are for sure companies out there working on this. So I did this project about three years ago and um, a lot of things and functionalities on the watch have improved since then, but this feature is not there yet. And I think it's really exciting knowing that machine learning engineers, machine learning teams at Apple and companies like Fitbit are also actively working on projects like this and also using accelerometer, gyroscope data, training classification algorithms to make applications like this. So that covers the introduction for this video series. Now, all that's left to do are some action items if you wanna follow along, and I highly recommend for you to follow along. You will learn a lot and by the end you will have a whole folder a whole project of source code that you can use to process sensor data, detect outliers, generate features. And this will be very valuable, very useful if you want to pursue a career in data science or machine learning. Okay, so action items. First of all, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the next uploads from this series. And also you don't miss any future tutorials on data science, Python, machine learning. So that's the first action. Then step two, if you don't already have done that, you uh, should set up Visual Studio Code for data science. And I've created a video explaining step-by-step -step how to do this. Mm -hmm. So that is the video over here. You can check that out. And why you should do this is because during this project, we will be using Visual Studio Code as explained in this video, we won't be using Jupyter Notebooks. We will be using something similar. We'll be using interactive Python within Visual Studio Code. And if you wanna follow along, it's just the easiest if you copy my settings so you can easily follow along. Okay, that was step two. Then the next action item is download this project template. So this will be a link to my GitHub repository. You can either download the zip file or you if you have git ins installed you can just git clone this repository and then use this project template to create a visual studio code workspace from the template folder and i've explained uh, how to set up a workspace within visual studio code also within this video so if you download the project template over here and follow 
this video over here, you should be fine. And then the final action step is to leave a comment under this video right now and let me know if you consider yourself a quantified self. And if so, what are you measuring? And this, this is just because I'm curious. Um, I really like this concept of a quantified self and I would love to learn from you as well. So let me know right now, leave a comment. Do you consider yourself a quantified self? And if so, what are you measuring? All right, and that concludes the action items for this video. I will make this document available um, in the description so you can check everything out and you also have the links to the resources. If you want to follow along, which I highly recommend, make sure to complete all the action items for this week so that uh, next week when I upload the next series, you can immediately start diving into the data. So there I will share the data. I will show you how to uh, or where to put that into the project file. And then we can start writing code and we will be all on the same page. So everything will run smoothly. So that's it for this video. See you next week in part two, where we convert the raw data.